Hi, my name is Adam Minnie, and I'm with Sage Innovations, and I'm here to talk today about VLANs. Periodically, I get questions about security as it relates to implementing voice over IP. Um, this is particularly um, important when it comes to banks and other institutions that have compliance requirements, FDIC, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, HIPAA, and other kind of uh, security requirements. So um, the most basic way to do it is through the traditional method of VLANing. Um, I've depicted a diagram here of two sites, Acme Site 1 and then the uh, Acme Remote Site here. Uh, each of these sites have a QoS LAN. Uh, this generally is um, vendor agnostic. This is standards-based technology, so we're talking you know, all the standard HP, Cisco's, uh, brocades of the world um, would all um, support this in a managed environment. So we have a managed switch here and we have a managed switch here and uh, basically what we're going to do is a VLAN is um, effectively a way to segment a physical environment. Um, actually two VLANs can travel across the same cable uh, and that information cannot um, s communicate with each other so those two VLANs cannot talk and we'll talk about what that means. So basically what I've done here is I've defined two VLANs, VLAN 1 which is our data VLAN and VLAN 5 which is our voice VLAN. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and where the uh, devices plug into the network on the network switch we actually get to define what VLAN that's a member of. So VLAN 1 is data we said so we're just going to just quickly run around and tag um, our switch ports for um, what they do. So VLAN 1 for our PCs, our servers here. Um, we could put uh, the phone system in VLAN 1, but we want the phones to talk to it, so we're going to put it in, a, in the phone VLAN, same with the gateway. Now the router is kind of tricky because it actually gets access to both VLANs, so we're just going to quickly go in here and uh, we'll just give it access to both of those, and we'll talk a little bit about that. That's um, how that works. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring that to the front here so that it looks good. And so we have both VLANs. We have everything tagged down here. Now we need to go back and tag our uh, voice environment. So we have VLAN 5 that can be spoken to for the phones here. And uh, we said that the gateway um, would be and the phone system would be. And so basically, um, in the simplest form, we'll work the remote site here and then we'll... Uh, create some more VLANs and we'll run around and tag everything but you get the concept here. Uh, first we're going to do a traditional uh, data path and so we'll come in here and we're gonna send a packet, an email request or a banking request would be best from this user um, to uh, a server um, and so basically what would happen is a request from this PC would leave this PC enter the LAN on VLAN 1 and since it's on VLAN 1 it can talk to anything with VLAN 1. So since it's able to talk to the banking application, it could do so. It can go ahead and return its path and communicate back. Uh, the server can communicate in this, in this way with anything on its own VLAN. So it could communicate out. The uh, PC itself could communicate out via the router and cross the WAN um, to have dialogue with the remote site. So those things all exist and can be done, um, no problem. If a user, let's say, were to try to um, just clear off this traffic, if a user were to try to actually access, say, the phone system um, directly without permission to do so, that that wouldn't um, that wouldn't happen. Also, if a user tried to cross over and talk from the PC to the phone uh, that wouldn't happen because you can see here that they're actually in different VLANs and so they actually wouldn't see each other any broadcast traffic that might go from phone to phone to phone would actually not even come to a port which uh, isn't tagged for the VLAN that it's on so there actually is a segmentation that exists there and so there's no way for those two VLANs to communicate with each other now let's say we needed um, a communication to happen. Let's use it as, a, as an example. I need to do a screen pop on a computer here. Well, what would happen is the packet would leave VLAN 5 and in turn go to the router and be routed back, and that traffic would then enter the appropriate VLAN. And uh, I could then send a screen pop to that user. Now, what's important here is there's something called an access list that exists 
in this router here and it's telling us that anything with a source of this phone system server is allowed to go ahead and talk to other uh, devices on the network and cross VLANs whereby we would restrict everything else so any other external resources that might occur uh, also from VLAN to VLAN so as an example if you didn't want traffic to cross over to uh, a production banking environment uh, application or something you'll be able to segment those as well but now as we work through um, this VLAN session it's important to understand a few things. Um, in most voice over IP deployments, um, the VLANs aren't flat like this. Um, typically what happens is the phone itself um, plugs into the actual LAN and the, the PC plugs into the phone. And so it, the true um, depiction of what we're talking about here would look something more like this. The PC plugs into the phone, the phone plugs into the network and what, here, what happens is both VLANs are assigned to each port. Now um, you would think well that's crazy because now uh, both devices have access to each. No, what really happens is the packet as it leaves um, each of the devices it's either tagged or untagged and so if we were to find traffic that left as an example this workstation and went out across the network now it left uh, VLAN 1 we'll talk about that because remember the data VLAN is VLAN 1 and went to the banking application and then in turn came back and returned to the PC um, one would think since it passed through the phone it actually has to um, go to the phone VLAN and that's not true what actually happens here is in the switch we define VLAN 1 as the untagged VLAN so I'm going to say untagged, untagged traffic and so at the front of the IP packet when the IP packet itself leaves the um, PC in this case travels through the phone which is the physical layer there's no data exchange ha um, happening here and comes into the switch the switch is inspecting the packet and saying aha that's untagged and so it's part of VLAN 1 and so it'll have access just like it does today to anything with VLAN 1 but not to anything with VLAN 5 so now what happens on the phones is the phones are tagged uh, with VLAN 5 and so in this w in this way um, their tags say VLAN 5 on them and so when a packet leaves the phone ie a voice call leaves the phone it enters and the inspection of the switch says aha you're in VLAN 5 it places that packet in VLAN 5 on the switch and it would then in that at that point have access to anything with VLAN 5 for the purpose of uh, communication now again it's tagged traffic in VLAN 5 and so chunk chunk it has no access um, to actually uh, communicate with any devices on that VLAN. Add additional sites uh, same methodologies hold true so well, I would want to tag both VLANs uh, as they carry over here and um, as we bring those in we'll just tag the appropriate uh, ports just like we were doing before and in that way something on VLAN 5 as we're uh, kind of laying out here would be uh, it would be acceptable um, for those devices to talk across the WAN so let's say for instance we wanted to place a phone call and it was local out of a remote site that would cross the network in this way maintaining VLAN 5 so maintaining separation from the data network really from the production environment and I could send that call out something like this outside world like a least cost routing type of situation where it would be cheaper to call from a different city so anyway a couple different ideas there with uh, QoS uh, on v, I'm sorry uh, VLANing and uh, if there's anything that um, you need help with uh, any questions that you might have um, hit me up uh, you can reach me at a many that's uh, AMENNE -N -E at sage VOIP advice.com or you can give me a buzz at 314-852-5800 and I uh, hope this little video helped. Have a great day.